Hello, welcome back to another episode of my survival series. This is episode seven. And in the last episode, I put together this automatic item sorter. And one thing I forgot to mention is I do have an input chest right here. You can see it's shooting the cobblestone out into the water stream up there. And we should see that, yep, there we go, coming into here. That chest is almost full. And then we've got one over here as well. And this is just for mob drops. And I'm not sure why this one shoots it out slower than this one here. I'm going to have to look at the redstone and see if I got something mixed up. I mean, it's okay that it goes a little bit slower, but it should be going faster like this one. So I'll have to look at that sometime and see if I can figure it out. But I have an input chest here and here because I don't have enough hoppers to connect the two of them together. Eventually, I want to have enough hoppers that I can just have one system where everything is connected with one input chest. And same thing with down below that they could come up through a bubble elevator and it'll just like I, I could put like uh, mob drops into this bubble elevator and have them eventually make it over here or I could put other blocks like everything that's on this side into this elevator and have it come up and make its way around so I'll eventually tie the two elevators together into probably this one will flow across over here into this hopper and then it'll go down the line and wrap around somehow. I'll figure that out eventually. But the plan for now is I'm going to start working on a village breeder. And after that, I'm going to start working on an iron farm. But one thing that I'm going to need, this, this is a, a, a village breeder designed by Impulse SV. And I'm probably going to put it back over this way someplace. However... I'm going to need to go get some glowstone. I either need glowstone or sea lanterns. And right now, getting glowstone is going to be a lot easier for me to get than sea lanterns. So I'm going to have to go into the nether to pick up uh, some glowstone. And then from there, I can start working on the village breeder someplace over that way. And hopefully get an iron farm going because I'm out of iron. I think I've used up almost all of it. Uh, might not be in this chest. It might be over there in my storage over here someplace. But yeah, I'm going to need a lot more iron if I want to complete this storage system here. It's going to take a lot of hoppers because each one of these modules takes five hoppers. Now, if I only had one chest, I would still need three hoppers. And that uses up iron really, really fast. So... I think that getting the village breeder going and getting an iron farm going will be a good thing to do. And then maybe after that I can get the uh, villager trading hall going, but who knows, that might not even be this episode. Alright, so let's get to it. I'm ready to go into the nether and see if I can gather up some glowstone. I have my gold helmet on. I brought some scaffolding so I can climb up and get it. I've got my silk touch pickaxe. And before I go, one thing that I also did before this episode is I fixed this here. Remember last episode, items were getting caught on the hoppers. And so I fixed that so that they're not getting stuck there. And then also down here in my mob grinder, I also took the spider drops and they now go into the dispenser system and will make their way up into the automatic storage system. So let's head into the nether here and let's see if I can easily get some glowstone that I can use for the village breeder. Oh look at that, there's some right there. How easy is that? Okay, not as easy as I'd hoped. It's a lava. <laughs> but that's why we have scaffolding, right? Go 
out there like that. Oh, they're falling down. And let's see if we come out here. I uh, hear a ghast. Where's the ghast at? You know what? Let's, um... Break that, and... Let me get some dirt and go out there a little bit. We'll do this. Good thing I have my gold helmet on. This is probably a very, very bad idea. But how else am I going to get glowstone? Alright, so now that I'm here... Oh no. Where is that ghast? There he is. All right, let's see if I can go around over here and kill that ghast first. Can I get around? Yeah, let's see. Let's see if we can come up here. There we go. Took care of him. Oh, is there any easier to get glowstone around here? I'm, I'm very nervous about going out. Uh, did he drop anything? Yeah, I think I see a gas tier over there. I should go get that. Yep, got it. Wow, the nether just feels so much more dangerous now. Since they've made these changes to it. Alright, I should be able to safely gather up some of this now. I'm not sure how much I need, so I'm just going to grab a decent amount of it here. Whatever I can just quickly grab here. Oh, this just I know I'm safe on the scaffolding. It just makes me nervous walking out there on it. How much do I got? 21? Alright, I, I think that's probably enough. Let's get out of here. I really need to get myself some netherite, so that way I can lava-proof all of my weapons and tools and armor. Maybe that's something that'll happen rather soon in another episode. Let's get rid of this guy. Alright. So there we go. Made it into the nether and back out super fast. It only took me like five minutes. Last time I was in there for like a half an hour trying to find my way down to get that soul sand. So now there we go. We got 21 glowstone. I'm sure that's going to be plenty to get started on the village breeder. All right, so I've gathered up all the materials that I need to build the village breeder. But I'm going to go with a different design than what I was anticipating before. I'm going with a design that is a little bit more simplified. And this is by Logical Geek Boy. I like the one that Impulse SV designed, but this one is actually a little bit easier to build and I think is more suited for my needs. And so I'm thinking I'm going to put it kind of over in this area. There's a zombie down here someplace. I just heard him groaning. But someplace right over in this area is where I'm thinking this is going to go. And then when I build the iron farm, I won't have to move them very far because I'm going to put that back here in this area because I would really like it if the iron farm, the drops could go right down into my storage system. So I have to make sure that the village breeder, wherever I build that, is far enough away from the iron farm that the villagers in the breeder don't get scared by the zombies that will be over in the iron farm. So I'm thinking this is a good spot right over in this area here. I just got to kill the zombie and then I can 
get started with this. Maybe right here. This might be the spot. This is kind of a flat area. I need a 9x9 nine nine area that I can turn into a carrot or potato farm, which I actually don't have very many of either of them. So I'm thinking I'll start with carrots, bone meal them to get more. But the uh, villagers, they will plant more carrots and they will fill the farm out. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we'll we'll go right here. All right, so let's get started. All right, so here we have it. The village breeder is all put together. And the way this thing works is these guys in here, the farmer will harvest the carrots and replant them, but he will also eventually start throwing them to the other villager. And once they've had enough carrots, they will have a baby villager. And that baby villager will try to run through this gap down here to jump on the beds. But it can't make it through because it's trap doors. It thinks it can run through, but it can't. It, it gets tricked. So it falls down into this water stream down here, which then flows over to this point over here, and it gets stuck right there and grows up into an adult. Once it's an adult, it will swim up into this chamber here, where it will be stuck down in this corner, and... Let me get this minecart. I was testing it out. And so then what I do when I want a villager, I push this button. It goes underneath and it picks them up and brings them out. And I can tie this minecart system, the rails, into wherever I'm taking them. Whether it's going to the iron farm or the, the villager trading hall. Wherever they're go going to, I'll connect that right up to it. And so let's hang out here and see if we can see a baby villager be born. Hopefully it won't take too long. This can also be turned off as well. If I flip this lever here, they won't have line of sight to the beds. And they need line of sight to the beds to be able to um, breed and have babies because they won't think that it's a village, I guess. I think that's how it works. Oh, there they go. There's the love hearts. Are we getting a baby? Is it inappropriate to watch them? Come on. Let's get a baby. There it is. Okay, so here he comes. Come on, baby. There he goes. Yep, right into the water stream. 
And so he'll just safely hang out right down there in this spot. He's supposed to move to here. I wonder if I've done something wrong. But he should end up right down there on that cobblestone wall. Maybe that only happens once he turns into an adult. I don't know. I'll have to keep an eye on this and see what happens. But once he grows up, then he'll be over here in this chamber, and I can take him out to wherever I need him to go. And the reason this is all made out of glass is, well, I want to be able to see in. I could have made this out of any material that I wanted, but I wanted to be able to see in to see what was happening. But it's also made out of glass on top just to keep mobs from spawning because they don't spawn on glass. And it is also nice to just be able to easily see everything that's going on in here and see what the status of everybody is. Yeah, see, he's not making it up there. Hopefully he does. I guess we'll have to watch and see what happens to him. So there it is. That's the village breeder. I'm going to hang out here for a little while. See if I get any more baby villagers. I think they produce two babies per day cycle in Minecraft. And... Hopefully that'll be enough for me to get started with an iron farm. Actually, I could start building the iron farm kind of over in this area. I could start building it before I even have the villagers and then get them put into place once I've got them all. So uh, let's, see, let's see what happens here with this guy. All right, so I'm down next to the breeder, kind of underground here. I wanted to see what was going on with these guys. And once the second baby spawns, he pushes the first one up onto the cobblestone wall. And I guess they he just walked up there. So I guess that they can do that. They can walk up there if they want to. But they're going to try to swim and get away. And they're not going to make it any further than this. So as long as they're getting pushed over here eventually, once they grow up into adults, their heads will be in that water up there and they'll swim up into the next chamber. There we go. Finally, an adult grew up, swam right up into this chamber. And he'll just hang out here in this corner until I need him. Oh, look at this guy. What are you doing interrupting my video, you and your llamas? Anyway, yeah, so this is working just as expected. I'm not going to take him out of here yet because I have nowhere to take him to. And then he would just be sitting here in a minecart. Well, I can't reach that. But uh, I, I do need to get some more minecarts so that he can fill up this dispenser. But uh, I, I can manage with two for now. I, I can always craft up some more when I need them. But for now, this thing is working. I'm happy to see that. That you know, We've got some babies down there. we got three of them down there. And we've got this guy. So this is working as expected. And it looks like they're making another baby. Oh, well, where is it? There it is. Right into the water. Okay. So this is working out pretty well. And... Uh, once I get a bunch of them in here and I don't need more, I can just come over here and flip this lever and it pushes a block over here to block this off and then I won't be producing any more villagers because I don't want them to get into this chamber and then die from entity cramming. So it'll be good that I can turn it on and off as necessary. So I'm very happy about this. Very happy to see this is working the way it's supposed to. And so I'm thinking for the iron farm... I don't want to go too far away with it because, well, I, I, I don't want to have to take the villagers a really long way. I'm thinking it's going to go maybe right here in this area. And that way, once I start producing iron, I can bring it right into my storage system with hoppers and water streams. It might just come in right through this wall and be able to go into the system. 
So I think that's what I'm going to do. That's where it's going to go is kind of back here. Now I do need to keep it up off the ground because I want to make sure that the, the iron golems spawn in the right place. So if I'm going to put it here, I might have to actually put it up a little bit. It might be better to come over here with it. I don't know. I'll figure that out. But anyway, that's what I'm going to get started on next. Right after I get rid of this wandering trader and his llamas. All right, so you can see I've got this iron farm all put together here, but I don't have villagers in yet. So I'm gonna do that instead of as part of the time lapse, I'm gonna do that recording live as I play. Let's see if this works. So the goal is that, oh, there's a lot of them down there now. Look at all those guys. And some of them are stuck down here. They're not swimming up. Hmm. Anyway. I've got all these guys down here now, and we're going to send them up here, and hopefully they're going to get go across this activator rail and get ejected over here onto this block and walk over onto their beds. Hopefully. And then I have to capture a zombie, and I've got to put him in here. I have to remove all the scaffolding, and then we should start getting some iron golems spawning up there. But let's go see if this works the way that I hope that it does. And I still only have two minecarts. I have used up all of my iron. I think I have like three left. Yep, there he goes. He is on his way. And he's up there. Let's see if he went where he belongs. Yes, he did. And he will make his way over onto the bed. Let's see, I need to take that torch away. And there he goes, off to the iron farm. And did he go into place? Yes, he did. Both where they belong. Let's see if we can get the third one before night, and that way they can all lay down in their beds, and I can take away all of these temporary blocks. There goes villager number three on his way. And now this is just one side of the iron farm. I will need to do the other side as well. But if I can get these three guys into place, take away that. Uh-oh. Whoops. I wonder if that's going to mess things up. I forgot to take away the activator rail. Hmm. Let's see. What if I put a block here and then I take that away? Let him go over to that other bed. Come on. Get going. Come on, dude. There we go. And then I'll take away the, all of this. And that should do it. They can't get off of there now. And I need to go sleep myself before a bunch of things start spawning. Okay, so they've all slept in their beds. And they should be standing on their beds. Yes. Looks like 
this has been a success. And now I just have to do the same thing on the other side, and then I've got to get a zombie. All right, so I've taken down some of the temporary stuff up there, but you know what? I love scaffolding. It's starting to become one of my favorite things. All I need to do is hit that, and hit that, and everything, redstone and um, rails and everything just come raining down. It is so nice to... <laughs> to finally have scaffolding in the game like this that we can just put up something temporary. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> but anyway, um, it, it is really, really nice. I really like these scaffolding blocks um, for, for like even just this, just to go up here and quickly take down a piece of dirt that I forgot to get rid of. It just makes it super easy. All right, so now I just have to do the villagers on the other side and get a zombie, and this thing will be, hopefully, operational. So the first thing I did was went and got three villagers to put in the other half of the iron farm. And this went fine. They all went right where they were supposed to go, no problems at all, so I started setting up to bring the zombie in found a zombie, got him in a minecart, but I had a little trouble getting the minecart to go. Thankfully these two zombies came by and helped me out. But things didn't go so well. As you will see here, I didn't have things set up quite right to drop him off and he fell out and I had to fight for my life. And then I finally got one in. The only problem I had was nudging them into the water chamber down below. They just didn't want to fall in on their own. He didn't want to step fully onto that dirt block, and so I climbed down in the scaffolding and got myself up in there and nudged him in. And this iron golem spawned. Killed my zombie, and look how proud of himself he looks. I wasn't happy with him. Finally. I was able to get a zombie and now I had to find one that would pick up items. It took several zombies to do that. I fell down, fought creepers, was blown up a couple times, but in the end I got a zombie in. You can see he's holding a stone block which will keep him from despawning. I'd use a name tag on him if I had name tags, but I don't have any right now. Eventually I'll come back and name him. But now you can see iron golems are spawning up there and I now have a functioning iron farm. Right, so here we have a functioning iron farm. I have all the villagers in place. I have the zombie in place and getting a zombie in place, that was probably the most difficult part of this. It took me three attempts. This is zombie number three. The first one, he didn't go in where he was supposed to go. I had things configured incorrectly. The second one got killed by an iron golem. And then this third guy, he finally went into place. And look there, we have an iron golem going in to the lava. And I've had this thing running for a little while so far. Uh, let's go up there and see what we've got. Um, I am going to enclose this. At least enclose the villagers so that like uh, well, the patrols, like the um, pillagers, they don't come by and just walk over here and shoot these guys. Because they're kind of vulnerable right now. And so I'm going to want to protect them a little bit. And I'm going to put some walls around them. And eventually put a building around them. There's a golem dying right up there right now. So there we go. Stack in five. That's... It's not bad. I haven't been out here for that long. And um, some of them started spawning while I was taking down all the scaffolding and everything. I'm going to eventually take it this chest down so I don't have to come up here like this. And eventually it's going to go right into my storage system. 
So that's that's a good start. Um, I'm going to, you know, like I said, safeguard this place, and I'm going to build some type of safe room that I can go AFK at and just let the iron accumulate. Let's see what we got up here in this one. Probably about the same amount. Yeah, a little bit more on this side. But it's working well, and I'm also going to take the redstone for that lever down to the ground as well, so that way I can easily turn it off when necessary. But I'm happy with this. Um, we got a lot done in this episode. Got the, the village breeder put together, and got the iron farm put together. And so that's it for this episode, and if you liked it please leave a like and a comment and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and i will see you next time